to get third and fourth in uh, So the third uh, talk of the session is uh, me. Um, so, uh, so this is all uh, joint work with uh, Saul Schleimer, who is here this uh, this time. So you should go and, go and say hello to him if you haven't already. And so I'm talking about this triple gear, which uh, is this project we work on. You've probably seen the motorized version in the art exhibit. So. Um, So what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, both of these pictures, so... Uh, I like this one in particular. <laughs> so, so, right, so three uh, pairwise meshing gears, so they mesh together in pairs, each pair of them is meshed, is meshed and then they can't turn because neighboring gears have to turn in opposite directions. Um, so it just doesn't work. Um, so here's a challenge. Find a triple of pairwise meshing gears that does move. And uh, there's a few different ways to do this. Um, and I'm going to tell you about this triple gear, uh, the, one of the ways that we found to do this. So we were inspired by um, a couple of uh, works. Uh, one is, uh, is on Billick Rolling Link by Helen Ferguson. He had this last year at Towson, so maybe he was carrying these enormous heavy bronze things around him. Um, and the other is this knotted gear by Oscar van der Venter. And uh, let me just Show, let him tell you uh, what the knot gear uh, is. Hi, I'm Oscar van Deventer, and this is the knotted gear. It's not a puzzle, but it's a puzzling object. And this is, uh, these are two knots, a trifoil knot and the inverse. So a trifoil foil knot is a 2 by 3 knot, and the other one is a 3 by 2 and they gear rather like two gears into each other. And this metal version is actually quite smooth and it, uh, it gears really smoothly. But I have made uh, also another metal. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so, so and, and Helen and Bergson's is sort of doing the same thing. You've got these two rings that are linked to each other and the shapes of those rings force that if one is rotating, the other must rotate as well. Um, so, they have two gears and we want to do this with three. Um, but of course we need to say what the same means. Right? What is it exactly that they're doing um, that we want to copy? Um, so, so, the first, uh, so, the first axiom that we took is uh, that the, the, the mechanism that we built should be tracked. So what do we mean by this? It basically means you've got a bunch of gears and they can move relative to each other. It's not just frozen in place, but there's really only one way that you can do this. You can't sort of move this over here and move this independently. There's only one way in which all of the pieces can move. Um, the other property that these two things have is that somehow there's no gearbox. There's no box surrounding everything else, which is stationary as everything else rotates. So, um, so a counterexample, well, a mechanism that doesn't have this property is a, a wheel on an axle. So how do you sort of uh, formalize this? What, what are we talking about? Um, so if you, if you grab hold of the, the axle and hold it still and let the wheel rotate, then the wheel is just sort of rotating uh, in a simple rotational motion. Whereas if you grab hold of one of these uh, gears in the nautic gear and move the other one, it isn't just a simple rotation, right? It has to sort of twist around, sort of screwing around in a circular motion. So this is our uh, axiom that uh, uh, that encodes this feature of, of the knotted gear and the, the umbilical rolling link is that the movement of one gear in the frame of reference to the other is not, a, is not a rotation, it's not a simple movement. So it's something more complicated, so the wheel doesn't have this. So, so the other example to think about is if you have a box and you've got some axles that are attached to that box and gears and, uh, attached to those axles, then you just you know, have every, any kind of watch mechanism or so on. Uh, the, the box all of the other objects are moving just by rotation relative to that box. So that wouldn't be epicyclic. Why is it called epicyclic? So this is in reference to the Greek theory of the movement of the planets. Um, they, they, you know, were trying to, uh, they, they had the planets moving along circles, but then they had circles within those circles. So this more complicated motion made up of uh, combined circle, circular rotation. So, so these are the, the things that we want our mechanism to, to satisfy. It's got to be tracked, it's got to be epicyclic. Um, we also added one extra uh, axiom symmetry, um, which says that we want the gears to all look the same, and we want the, the entire mechanism to have a symmetry, so I can just rotate the whole 
uh, mechanism and, and the gears move to each other. And this is really just to make our lives easier, as we'll see later on. If you've got a symmetry property and the interaction between two gears, you only have to work that out once, and then you use the symmetry of, of the mechanism to move that, um, that around everywhere else to, to generate the whole design. And so we want to construct the mechanism um, with three gears, three rigid bodies that are moving in space that satisfies these axioms. So how do we do this? So, so the, first, uh, the first issue is, is this trapped issue. We want it to be a mechanism that can only move in one way. So first of all, if you've got some uh, pieces that are, that are sort of not linked, that I can just move them arbitrarily far apart, then obviously this isn't going to satisfy trapped. You can move them in many, many different ways, not just one. Um, we also want them to be, to be rings, that is round, so we're, we're going to make them uh, these sort of circular rings that rotate on their, on their axes. So I want to have linked rings. Uh, and they have to be round, so not sort of floppy, uh, knotted kind of, uh, knotty kind of rings. We want them to be actual circular rings, because we don't want the shape to change too much as we're, as we're moving the mechanism. Um, and it turns out that if you also want it to be symmetric, there's only one way to do this. So um, there's only... Uh, the, if you have round circles and you're making a, a linked mechanism, the, this, it has to be this, and this is called the, the three component link. And you're supposed to think of, I've got these, these three circles, and the mechanism is going to be, sort of these, these circles are the core of the mechanism, and they're all going to be rotating around in the same direction, um, and we'll put these on them, and so on and so on. Uh, but this, this claim that there's only one way to do this, you should try this. So if you take three key rings, which are round, usually. Make sure they're round cubings. And, and you link them together. So I want them to be uh, pair, pairwise linked. Each pair of rings is, is linked. And you put three of them together, satisfying this condition, you will have made this. Or it's mirror image. There's nothing else you can do. You can't do the ball me in the rings. OK, so what's next? So, so we, we know the sort of rough shape of what the gears are going to be. I've got these three linked things. But they can still jangle around. They're still not. Um, uh, they're not near tracked. Tracked, I need there to be only one way that things can move. So the next way to restrict the, the range of movement that they have is to expand these rings, to blow them up. So, um, so we just sort of inflate air into the rings, and they bump up against each other and shift in place, and you get to some maximum thickness of the rings, and this is what it looks like. Um, and uh, so, so that's, that's this picture here. So what we've hoped is that once you've made this, they can only rotate along their axes. And the intuition behind why that might be true is, well, you know, suppose that you could move them out of this position, then you'd sort of move them out of contact with each other, and then you'd be able to inflate them some more, so it wouldn't have been the maximum thickness. And unfortunately, that's not true. Um, yeah, so, so if you break the threefold symmetry, I, I was, that was one of my conditions when I was expanding the rings, that, that they have threefold symmetry. If you break that, then you can, they can jangle around a little bit, they have a bit more space, so in this configuration, you can make them slightly faster. Um, okay. so, so that's in that configuration, you could say it again? You can make them slightly faster. You can expand them a little bit more. I see. So, so if you have the threefold symmetry, you can only go this far. If you break that, you can go a little bit further. Um, further in making them bigger. Further in making them bigger, yes. For maximizing the, the, the figures. So, so we want to stop them moving out of, out of place. And we, even if this had worked, um, this would still have sort of too many degrees of freedom because I can rotate the rings independently. I need them to all rotate at the same speed. Um, and so when I put the teeth in to, to force them to rotate at the same speed, then they're also going to be, uh, it'll stop them from moving into this configuration. Okay, so how are we going to do the teeth? This was the, the bit that um, we were stuck on for about a year. Um, so, so, so let's look at how the three rings are touching each other, so all these sort of transparent rings. Let me take one away first because it's kind of complicated. I've only got two rings here, and they touch in two points. Um, you can't really see, there's a, there's a red block here, and there's, there's the one you can see there. So let me just tilt it up, so you can sort of see. So it's down here, and I've tilted it up. There's a red block here, and another one here. So it's actually a symmetric configuration between the two rings. Tilt it back down again, and so, um, so what happens when, when this ring rotates around on its axis, is that the points of contact with the other ring trace out two circles. So there's this inner circle in here, and there's an outer one over here. Uh, now, if I put in the third ring again, I get two more points of contact, and so I get two more circles on this guy. Let's take them all away. So these are the, these are the points of the, the circles of contact between this ring and the other two. And so the idea is that I want to put gearing on these points so that they interact in the right way with the other two, the other two rings. 
Um, so let me just move the inner rings over onto this ring here. And actually, I'll just go back. So, so notice the two, the two inner rings are really close to each other. So this is a problem. So this ring here, this circle, sorry, is interacting with one of the two, the two big rings. And the other circle is interacting with the other one. And there's teeth from those rings going to be coming through. And they have to sort of be consistent because there isn't enough space in here for those, for if, if these two bits of, if these two circles had sort of different gearings on them, then the teeth from the other gears would be crashing into those gears. So these, these two sort of have to be consistent. Um, so here I've moved the, the inner circles onto this other one, and we're just going to look at what happens between this outer circle, the interaction between this, this outer circle, and these two inner rings. What I'm going to do is treat them both as the same gear. I'm just going to make that, make that, uh, make that decision because otherwise it's just too horribly complicated to try and get the teeth to dodge each other. Okay, so, so I need to make some gears on here and gears on here that interact in the right way. So how am I going to do this? How am I going to design these, these, these gears here? Um, so what we ended up doing is a little bit ad hoc, but it worked. Um, so the inner teeth, because there's these two of them that we need to, to interact, uh, we, we're treating them as a single gear, so we just sort of make something up. As it happens, um, in toroidal uh, coordinates on this ring, these, these are just sort of planes. We just chose something. And then the idea is that we know how these two rings are moving relative to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that these guys are all solid, and this ring is made out of clay. And I'm going to rotate them against each other. And these teeth are going to carve channels out of the clay one. And then I'm going to use that shape. Um, and, well, and then tweak the, the, the angle of these things until it worked. Um, really very ad hoc. So, okay, so how do we actually do this? So let's zoom in. So this is the, the gear here. These are the inner teeth on this, on this ring here. And uh, I want to put red teeth on this guy here. So first I'm going to take, so I've got this curve here, which is a, at a peak of, of the teeth of, of the gears up here. And I've offset a little bit because you need gaps between things with 3D printing, otherwise everything fuses together and nothing moves at all. So, okay, so I've got this curve here, and then I'm going to see how does that curve change when I do the combined motion, the, the kind of combined rotation of the two, um, the two rings. And it looks like this. These are the images of this curve when I rotate it forwards. And so the carving idea tells you that whatever the bits of gear that are, um, that are attached to this ring, they can't be up here, because if they are, then this thing crashes through them as they're rotating. But this thing down here, that can be part of it. That's sort of the, tr the, the bottom of the trough that this guy is going to carve out of them. So I'm just going to take that curve and use it. So I'm going to do the same thing with this curve and this curve, and I get that tooth. It's a sort of curvy tooth. Uh, that I've built by carving, um, uh, carving it out of clay. Um, so let's just copy that around to all of the other places that it needs to be. And this is the gear uh, pattern that you get on the outside of this ring. And now again, because I've got the symmetry axiom, all of the other interactions between pairs of gears look exactly the same. So I just copy this around everywhere. And that's what you get. Um, after stitching, you know, putting some sort of stuff in between the places where the gears don't have to be and hollowing it out and all kinds of other technical stuff. Um, so the gears can be powered, as you've seen downstairs, uh, by a central helical axle. So uh, it sort of twists into the inner teeth of, uh, of, the, uh, of the gears. Um, we sort of worked out what this, this shape was by exactly the same sort of carving procedure. Um, it turned out that it's very close to a helix, so we just went with the helix. It's easy. Um, and then the, the, uh, the motorized version, so I have a lot of help in dealing with stepper motors, which I don't understand, and building things with electronics in them, so this is uh, Adrian Goldwasser and Stuart Young uh, both helped, helped me out a lot with this. Of course, after this, we found out a much easier way to solve the, the, <laughs> the problem. So, um, so, this, so this, isn't, this doesn't have this epicyclic thing, this has an outer cage, and then if I rotate, one of them, the other two rotate. And uh, this was much easier to design. Um, but of course, that's always the way it goes. Um, so, what are the other solutions that there are? Um, so, this is uh, another thing that you can do. So, um, so I don't have a 3D printer for this, we're, we're, we're working on this. So, so back, way back at the, the start of the talk, I had these three planar gears. They were sitting in a planar. Um, and, and both this guy and this guy 
the, the gears, uh, the axes that they rotate on, rotate on are skew axes, they're, they're, you know, they're not parallel uh, or, or they, and they don't meet. Um, so this is a solution where the axes are parallel. So it's very close to the plane case. Okay, how, what is going on here? So, so think of this as a, as a cross-section through, um, through the gears. I've got three axes that are going into the screen here. Um, and in this cross-section, the three of them look like this. So suppose that I rotate this one a little bit this way. Then it's going to push on this neighbor here, which is going to push on its neighbor here, and, and you're going to end up looking like this. So they all move the same direction, which is a little off the gears, but what are you going to do? Um, now there's this problem that as you keep pushing, eventually they lose contact. So this is no good, this isn't going to work for very long. But here's the trick, rather than thinking of these as, as uh, an animation in time, you think of them as different slices through um, a, a sort of helical screw which has this cross-section. And then what's going to happen is that, okay, so after a little bit, this cross-section has lost contact, but there's some other cross-section which is in contact and can continue pushing. And so these three gears all push on each other in the same way, and it keeps going. Um, so what are we doing next? Um, it looks like we should be able to do the same thing with a four-component coupling. Um, so this is, again, this is the stage where um, these are the maximum thickness. This was a you know, sort of numerically um, to get to the, the maximum thickness for the four rings, which are in the, the four-component offering link. Um, or we could use this thing, which didn't work, but hey, if you just pattern it up some more, then they won't be able to move at all, and then put teeth on them to, to constrain the way that they rotate. Um, we also thought about it would be nice to have a triple gear where the gears move at different speeds. But this seems like it might be very difficult because of these this crashing of the, the, the two inner circles very close to each other. Um, and more generally, we're, we're interested in exploring these mechanisms that move uh, in unusual ways. So, um, so that's my website, my other website, so lots of YouTube videos, including videos on, on the rotation, uh, the triple gear and the power triple gear. Um, you can buy stuff from Shakeways, the small ones downstairs, that you can also buy, uh, or if you're really cheap, you can just go to Thingiverse and download the 3D files and put them yourself. Um, so, thank you very much. The, um, when you do sort of carving out um, with the teeth that you made with the sort of, why did they have to be 3D? Could you have just made a 2D um, to, to carve out the shape? And then oh, gone with that? So, so right, so, so I guess, like, why not just have um, a, a, a 2D? Yeah, so, so I actually started out when I was trying to figure out how to do this, just having 2D teeth. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you have to fatten it up to 3D print it somehow. And, and it has an angle, right? I mean, if they really are 2D teeth, then you can have them slice through each other. In fact, you can. It looks like you should be able to do different speeds for the different the different guys. It works out. But but then, right? How do you fatten it up? Um, they they come they come through. They're sort of slicing through each other. They're, they're moving um, uh, relative to each other in a sort of complicated way. And if right, I mean, you could do it if you had just a um, a really strong maybe made out of metal, but then it's not so clear that, that well, they don't transmit forces as, as it is very well, but if they were just sort of really point contact between uh, just sort of planar gear teeth, then my feeling is that it would be really um, sort of jangly and hard to move. But, but, it, isn't, but isn't what you're, but you're using that blue, blue shape? Right. Basically, to, to, to create your. Right, they're your carving out the other ones. Yeah. So. But, but, I mean, they're fat, and, and, well, I mean, there's a few sort of fudgy choices that I made that I'm not really telling you about. I mean, this, this, this blue plane here and the red plane behind it, um, they're pretty close to each other. So, I mean, who knows if this. I mean, mathematically, there's like a single point contact or something. But in reality, I mean, it, it's, it's got more than just, just uh, it, it's got some stability there. Yeah, yeah. These axioms you put down at the beginning and right. said that's what you want to have, require. Did you, the process you went through really start with those axioms? Or did you, yeah, okay. 
So, so do you have any input on, on where the axioms came from? We had different axioms um, before these axioms, and they were wrong. Oh, <laughs> it, it took us quite a long time. To I just suspected so. That's the way well. things usually go. Okay, the other thing, you said something about shapeways at the very end. Right. What did you say about them? Uh, you, you can buy it from shapeways. Uh, you can buy the triple gear from shapeways. Oh, 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 I see. I print okay. all the stuff through shapeways and you just put stuff up. And you can yeah, yeah, I, I, I know about that. Yeah, okay, good. So the, the, the straight screw that goes through all of them, was that an afterthought or was yeah. it what it We had no idea that that was going to work. That, that was perfectly simple. Yeah, it, it, I think we were lucky or something. Well, it was something we want. It's something we wanted. Right, right. The, we were the, very desirous. The first of it. question is, okay, can we get it to run on its own? Yeah. And and you know maybe you have like three caterpillar tracks underneath it that are kind of rotating and, and yeah. I mean the fact that you could put this through and it doesn't match with anything else, I, at least to me, it's very surprising. We we weren't thinking about that. Okay. Uh, one more question. I, I, I already hate myself for asking this, but have you thought of any mechanical applications? <laughs> People ask this question as well. I mean, it may be, well, who knows, right? I mean, suppose you have, um, so this is, the, this is the long version, which does this cool thing. Um, but, you know, maybe you've got some sort of um, axle and a tube, and you want them to have contact between each other, but not completely solid contact. I have no idea. What about a mixing machine? Um, yeah. Mixing paint. Cleaning this would be really interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, one of the problems is fabrication. I mean, we 3D printed it because how else are you going to do it? I mean, you could, you could get somebody um, with fantastic amounts of skill to carve it out of wood, but other than that, you can't cast it. Um, you, you'd never remove the, the mold. So, so it has to have it has to have this this. Um, uh, you know, well, it has to have pieces has to have and then weld it. So. To cast it and then weld in pieces and weld you, it together. Right, you could try doing that. You can yeah. sell it from a programmable milling machine. I, I mean, it's got, it's got so much so much sort of undercut that I don't know. <coughs> yes. Yeah. So, are there put two sets of teeth on each gear that sort of twist around <coughs> each ring? There are three sets of, well, so. Like the blues here, I couldn't, I couldn't tell if the... the so, so the two blues, so, okay, so back here there were four circles of contact between this ring and the other two. The, the two in the middle, I combined together into one set of BOT, and then the other two are there in the set of BOT. So, so there are three of them, uh, but really there's four. Are the, teeth, uh, are the teeth the same on each track, or are they they're shaped differently? Well, the, the inner ones are all the same as each other, the outer ones are all the same as each other. Okay. So we only had to design two sets of teeth that work together once. Like the blue and the red. The blue and the red is that yeah. Why uh, is it impossible to do it on the Borromean uh, rings? Uh, so, so you can't uh, make the Borromean rings with round circles. It doesn't work. So, and we want round circles because you want rotation. Yeah, that, that was another other axiom I didn't understand. I can't imagine that with, uh, with an oval uh, form. If it was flexible. Lips, yeah, maybe, maybe if you had a uh, flexible thing that could work. It's, it's completely uh, well uh, in, in, in the same phase or something like that. I cannot exactly explain, but right. I have a feeling it must be also possible to be done with you'd, you'd, need, you'd need a flexible over here. So that would be tricky. Or, or some sort of chain link chain. or something. That sounds, I mean, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have the central board which has these gears on it. Are they the same as back on the three rings? Um, they're, they're close. We sort of made them in the same carving way. Will it still work if you're, instead of a rod, it's a curve, it's a bent pipe? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we thought about this, having a big circle. Yeah, really so, so, I mean, you should do. I mean, I mean, if you make the circle big enough, then it's the same, right? I mean, there's enough flex, so then you could just, you know, Hand over hand, and we just roll down the other side. <laughs> That'd be very cool. Yeah. And did you have you made a three parallel thing yet? I would have a photograph if I did. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. um, we're thinking about other. You know, can you turn it upside down and change the direction of motion and things like this? So, but but we have to make it soon. We also want to try and do one with one two instead of three. Here's with one two. Yeah. Naturally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions?
Very well. The payments for carving thing. Oh, you, yeah. You, how come you've got your thing on the got a zigzag pattern around it, but if you carved something, you'd have a spiral, so... Oh, um, well, right. So, so there's all these things that are, they, they look like part of a spiral around the ring, and and um, one of the reviews, right? One of the reviews actually asked about this. Could you sort of, you know, this this guy here sort of looks like he's continuing onto this one, and maybe you could continue it um, as as a spiral appears around it. Although, um, I mean, the, the teeth wouldn't serve any purpose here because they're, they're not in contact, and they could crack the things. So aesthetically, it's nicer. Mm -hmm. Sure. I wanted something that worked. <laughs> First, but yes. now, but now, I mean, for next year. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks very much.